Another evolutionary mechanism that causes microevolution that I wanted to talk about is the idea of migration. Now, in during migration, genes from other populations will enter another population. Now, sometimes, remember I talked about before in the lecture series about the importance of studying interpopulation differences or differences that exist within a population as well as intrapopulation gene similarity. If there's enough similarity between populations that live far apart, it is possible for genes from one population to flow to that of another because they're similar enough that their interbreeding can still take place. So let's say, for example, how do trees from really far away end up all the way miles and miles away from where they were, sometimes thousands of miles? Well, of course, it's because the pollen and the seeds are carried by pollinators and by the wind and across the distance of the field. So what ends up happening is that you're going to get these different kinds of uh, of genes. Of course, it's going to depend on how high the canopy is, the airflow, the height of the trees, uh, whether or not this pollen can actually be carried, how much pollen you have, how much seeds you have, and also, of course, whether or not the pollen can be mixed with the pop pollen in the population that lives really far away, whether or not there are trees far away which are going to be receiving this pollen, and whether or not the topography is going to block the pollen or not. If it is a big mountain in the way, it's probably going to block the pollen. But given proper conditions, it's possible for, for the pollen to migrate over thousands of miles and end up creating a tree really, really far away. And that's how sometimes plant life grows in an island that's in the middle of nowhere in the ocean because it's actually coming from far away into the land. And the same thing is true about bug populations which migrate across the landscape, bird populations, and even other smaller populations of animals as global warming shifts, the, the global wind belts and the, the temperature belts higher or lower, you actually get animals which are migrating north or south and therefore bring new genes into areas that previously did not have those genes. So populations of wolves that live in a certain area and were previously isolated may have new genes coming through from areas where other wolves used to live and that used to live separated from those wolves because of the migration patterns that take place. So what gene flow will do, which is what we call migration genetics terms, is bring genes either out of a population or into a population which will change the genetic composition of the population. And what this will tend to do over time is, is called, it will home homogenize the frequencies. In other words, it will make the frequencies pretty much uh, the same because you're going to be uh, mixing out the population and bringing them more closer to each other. Let's give an example of this so you can see what I'm talking about here. So in a previous video, I mentioned that there are other kinds of math that you can do with then population genetics. And there's actually a proof for this, which I'm going to be discussing this example. But I'll talk about that in a, in when I do the advanced videos. But I also wanted to point out that there, there are ways to qu quantify the amount of or the effect that a migration will have in a, in a population that's endemic to that area. So let's see, for example, if you called uh, this first here thing, the change that it will occur in the, in the genotype of a certain alu, in this case they're talking about P, so they're talking about the dominant alu in a population. Well, to figure out the change, you have to look at the difference between the population that is migrating inwards and the population that was uh, the originally there. So you, you calculate the difference between the allele ratios of the two genes in those two populations. And then you uh, multiply that by the fraction of the population that is made up of migrants. All right. So that's kind of how the, the idea of the math that you use. And there's a proof for this, but if you remember this much, it kind of makes sense. So let's look at an example, for example. The most common example of migration would say, for example, when you bring, uh, if you're running, for example, a herd of cows and you bring a, a new set of cows, you buy a bunch of cows, they may have a, a trait that you didn't have before. Let's say, for example, you had 100 red Angus in your, in your ranch, and now you want to bring some, some other ones which are black, you know, so that's going to be a bunch of these. And you actually buy some heterozygous ones, so you see that the alu ratio on the population that you're bringing in is going to be 50% because all 100 of them are going to be half uh, dominant, half recessive, so they're, since they're heterozygous. Now, you didn't have any uh, dominance before, so your population was zero. There was, there was none of that before. So what's, what's going to be the change in that population, therefore, if that's the case? Okay, so let's, let's see if you can calculate mm -hmm. that. So if the original population had none and the new population has 0.5, the difference between the two is going to be 0.5. And since you had 100 people before and now you had 100 and more, the, the population you had before it's going to be only half, and the new population will be half of the of the new population that you're actually looking at. So the migrants will, will now constitute half the population, so the M here will be 0 
And since the difference was also 0.5, the change in the P will be 0.25. So that means that the dominant LU will go up by 0.25, all right? So that's the idea that they're talking about here. Now, if the dominant LU is going up by 25, that means that if it was 0 and it's going up by 25, it's now going to be 0.25. So that means that now the recessive LU is only 0.75 of the population since they both have to add up to 1. So you see, in, a, in one single migration event, you change the population from being 100% uh, little b to 75% little b because of, of all the heterozygous that you brought into the population. So you see how migration can hom homogenize the genes and kind of level out the amount of values that you find in the, within the population. So that's migration. And there's a lot more cool stuff that you can do with this kind of math. But the concept that you need to understand is that genes can flow from one place to another because of, of migrations. And that's going to be important in the next chapter when we talk about speciation and intrapopulation versus interpopulation uh, differences and similarities. So remember this. Now, because of migrations is why you are seeing a changing face in America. Uh, this is a, an issue that came out a little a while ago in the, in the Time magazine. And it was basically about the fact that the face of America is changing. Uh, as immigrants from all around the world come to the U.S., so we are creating our first multicultural society with a lot of different kinds of, uh, of genes being put together. And you see that, for example, look at the U.S., you have uh, African-American people, you have white, Caucasian uh, people, you also have people of Asian descent, people of Native American descent, you're going to have people are of different kinds of European communities, you're going to have people from Italy, people from Ireland, people from England, people from Germany. Uh, and all we have, recently you have a really strong influx of, of Hispanic populations from all over South America and Latin America as well. So all of this is mi mixing together to create a new look among the American population because the face of America is changing as the, all these genes get homogenized among the population because of migrations. And that's the idea of the variety that exists. And you see that in the, in the back how they have the pictures of the, all the different kinds of faces that they're putting together to make this. And of course, they did this on a computer program, but you can also devise that this is actually true, that they're actually combining like this at the genetic level. Now, of course, it's going to depend on dominance relationships, so it's a lot more complicated than that, and also environmental pressures and all other kinds of genetic relationships. But ultimately, migration will cause greater variation within the population and homogenization of the gene frequencies.